loves and laughter of one of America's most fascinating women, Nellie Bly. DuPont presents Agnes Moorhead as Nellie Bly in Nellie Was a Lady on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Now, here is Gain Whitman. Tonight, we want to tell you about Speed Easy Wall Finish, one of DuPont's better things for better living for home decorators. DuPont Speed Easy is that wonderfully easy-to-use new wall paint that quickly makes stained and shabby walls soft, rich, and beautiful. It is an oil-type paint, but you thin it with water and apply right over wallpaper, wallboard, or any interior wall surface. It is beautiful and long-lasting. One gallon does the average room in one color, and it costs less than $3. Speed Easy is what the name says. It's quick and it's easy. It's Speed Easy, made by DuPont. The DuPont Company presents Nellie Was a Lady, starring Agnes Moorhead. Miss Moorhead is one of the stars of the Metro Golden Mayor production, Our Vines Have Tender Grapes. The Cavalcade of America. <laughs> Eighteen eighty-five. The country is undergoing serious upsets. Women are coming out of the kitchen and invading fields hitherto considered sacred to the male of the species. One of these fields is the newspaper, and the spearhead of this invasion is a girl with big, soulful gray eyes, a manner determined, and the energy of a wild cat. Nellie Bly. Nellie Bly, Nellie Bly, bring the broom along. We'll sweep the kitchen clean, my dear, and have a little song. Taking her name from the popular song by Stephen Foster, Nellie has journalism by the throat and shakes it until it cries for mercy. Nellie will do anything for a story. Well, no, not anything. It's still the elegant 80s, and Nellie is always a lady. No, indeed, sir. You may not invite me to dinner. I do not consider that going up in a balloon with you constitutes a proper introduction. Hi, Nellie. Oh, Nellie, listen to me. It is the year 1888, and Nellie, fresh out of Pittsburgh, has just talked herself into a job on the New York world. Come in. Oh, what can I do for you, miss? Uh, you're Mr. John Dale, aren't you? I uh, wonder if you'd object if I moved in. Moved in? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Pulitzer just told me. That is, I, I've just been taken on as a reporter, and the other gentlemen, well, I'm afraid they don't like women reporters. Well, we haven't had very many, Miss... Uh... Uh, Bly, Nellie Bly, just like the song... If you wouldn't mind, that little desk over in the corner would suit me nicely. If you wouldn't mind. Why, certainly not, Miss Bly. And, and anything I can do to help you, I, I'll introduce you to society. Oh, but that's not what I want, Mr. Dale. I didn't come to New York to write about cookery and valentines and society receptions. But you can't hope to cover the police court, Miss Bly, or attend prize fights. But why not, if I wanted to? Well, there must be other stories here in the city, Miss Bly. What about the hospitals, the charitable institutions? Surely those are places for a woman's sympathetic interest... Well, I hadn't thought of that. I, I shall have myself committed to, uh, to an insane asylum. What? But how, Miss Bly? How will you do that? Just you wait and see. <laughs> oh, where is the beauteous majesty of Denmark? He is dead and gone, lady. At his head a grass green turf, at his heels a stone. I would give you violets, but they withered all when my father died. <laughs> Why is that in there? People are trying to sleep. Miss Fly, this is the landlord. Miss Fly, open this door. Open the door, I say. Oh, Mr. Harrington, I hope I haven't disturbed you. Rouse my entire boarding house, Miss Fly. One of my boarders has even called the police. Please be good enough to vacate your room in the morning. Well, I'm just preparing to write a story exposing conditions in the home for the insane on Blackwell's Island. Oh, poor things. It's said they're horribly mistreated. Indeed? Yes, I'm planning to feign insanity so that I can be committed and reveal the truth. Oh, you must help me, Mr. Harrington. Well, I shall be glad to, Miss Bly. <clears throat> but uh, pray, let us have no more disturbance. Disturbance? I was only practicing with these speeches from Hamlet. I would give you violence. Oh, yes, <laughs> Ophelia. Ophelia, yes. Uh, a very affecting role. <clears throat> Miss Bly, I was on the stage myself for a number of years oh, and no. uh, for the portrayal of madness 
if you will observe my rendition of the scene from Lear. Oh. My finest role. Yes. <clears throat> blow, wines, and crack your cheeks. Rage, blow, you cataracts and hurricanes. Spout. Oh, why? 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 Oh, dear, Miss Pryor, the police... Ah, success, Mr. Harrington. Remember, my name is Ophelia yes, Jones. Yes. I would give you violence. What's the commotion oh, here? Low wines and yes. crack your cheeks. Officer, this woman has gone oh, stark rage. raving mad, I tell you. What? Blow. Well, uh, I'd better call the wagon. Button your mouth, my girl, or you'll get the cold water treatment and a few thumps over the head. Major, and I insist that you take me to the superintendent. There's nothing whatever the matter with me, and I refuse to stay in this place for another night. Listen to her now. Miss High and Mighty refuses to stay, she does. Mrs. Cobb, you don't understand. I've been pretending I'm a reporter, a reporter of the New York world. Well, ain't that nice, reporter. <laughs> over in that cell is Napoleon's wife, and over here is Queen Elizabeth, reporter. Well, why don't you write a little story? Indeed, I will write a story. A story that will expose every bit of the graft and filth and brutality of this horrible place. Why? And you know what, Mrs. Cobb? I'm going to write a special chapter about you. Extra, extra, Nellie Bly forces Mayor to clean up conditions on Blackwell's Island. Extra. Oh, you new lady, don't you see there's a sign there that says keep off the grass? Yes, yes, officer. <laughs> but if I don't step on the grass, how can I pick the flowers? Oh, pick the flowers. <laughs> oh, that ain't allowed either, ma'am. Well, I am picking them. <laughs> what do you intend to do? Oh, <laughs> oh, I don't think it would wreck City Hall if a pretty little lady like you were to take a few pauses. <laughs> well, all right, I'll try. Hey, 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 hey. Stop picking up that stone. Don't, don't do it, don't do it. Oh, break in the window, will you? Well, if it's jail you want, that's just what you're going to get. Nellie Bly in jail. Read about brutal treatment of women prisoners in city jail by today's world. Well, Miss Nellie, I must admit you cleaned up Blackwell's Island and the, uh, the ladies' jail, but... Really, no. And this week, John, I'm going to Albany to be a lobbyist. Oh, no. I intend to catch that arch briber and boodler, Mr. Jonas Walsh. Nellie Bly goes to Albany. Bribery and graft ring in state capital. Read all about it by today's world. Miss Bly, Nellie, that was going too far, really associating with low, corrupt politicians. Well, I don't know what you mean, Mr. Dale. Jonas Walsh was a crook, to be sure, but aside from that, he was rather a sweet old man. And that isn't all, Miss Nellie. My aunt tells me she saw you yesterday behind the counter at Wanamaker selling uh, <clears throat> men's nightgowns. Well, I was merely collecting material for my Sunday story, The Problems of a Shop Girl. There's such a thing as going too far, even for a good story. You aren't a newspaper woman. You're a public menace. Oh, Indeed. Indeed. Well, if my presence is annoying, I beg to remind you that this is my office, too. Oh, I... I apologize most humbly, Miss Nellie. It's, it's only that I... Well, it wounds me for you to do these things because I... Well, I... Good heavens, Miss Nellie, why are you putting on that bonnet? Salvation Army is starting a new campaign for fun. Oh. I'm marching with them this evening, and do you know they're letting me beat the drum? <laughs> Yes? Yes, what is it? Uh, I'm the butler of Mrs. Norton. She's given her season's music care right up there in the ballroom. And Mrs. Norton requests that you move on. Oh, yes? Uh, well, please ask Mrs. Norton if she'd mind stepping out for a moment. I'd like to speak to her personally. Stop, stop that infernal noise. Oh, that's better. I am Mrs. Eggleston de Peister Norton. Do you realize that you're disturbing the guests of my music album? Well, we'd be glad to move on, only we're launching our campaign for the new Bowery Shelter. Perhaps you would like to drop a little something on the drum, ma'am? Oh, you won't get a penny from me. 
All those idle, shiftless people, if they can't take care of themselves, they're better off dead. Oh, really, Mrs. Norton? May I quote you on that sentiment? You certainly may. And now, will you please go? You're ruining my entire evening. Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry, Mrs. Norton. If you should change your mind, you may call on me tomorrow at the New York World. <gasps> With your donation, which I'm sure will be a generous one, just ask for Nellie Bly. Ladies and young girls strolling through Central Park of late are being subjected to all sorts of annoyances from idle, pleasure-loving men who have no better way to spend their time. One particularly offensive masher appears only on Wednesdays, so tomorrow I shall don my prettiest frock and station myself beside the lily pond. Free band, whoa. <coughs> Lovely day, isn't it? Oh, yes, sir. Lovely. Those uh, fine little boys playing over there, are they uh, yours? Mine? Oh, oh no, sir. Oh, no, uh, sir. just taking the air alone, huh? Well, I try to get as much sun as I can. So dreadfully damp in my basement room. <laughs> oh, what a pity. You must neglect your health like this, I say. Uh, how about a spin with me? I'll put the top down and we'll get plenty of sand. Oh, really, sir? I don't think... Oh, I... no, no. Not I... another word. Here we go. Up's the daisy. Oh. Now, uh, how's this? All cozy and comfy? Oh, where am I? Where is this? There's a, a, a sort of a, a, a private club, my dear. Now, suppose we think about a little supper. Uh, shall it be oysters, Rockefeller, champagne? Oh, I don't think I should eat anything. I, I must go home. Grandmama will worry. Oh, but you can't run away like this. Oh, please, please, I must. Where is my cloak? Not so fast, my little flirt. Oh. <laughs> I'll get a kiss out of this. Oh, sir, sir, let me go. I'll scream. No, you can't play with a man like this, you know, you little demon. Come here now, come here. <laughs> What is your name, my dear? Well, if you would like to know my name, look in tomorrow's issue of the New York World. The, the New York World? You're, you're not. Nellie Bly, sir, at your service. And I took care to find out your name, too, from the waiter, Mr. J. Wellington Potter. Why, you little vixen. Have a care, sir. I shall print every word. Well, uh, well oh, all right, Miss Bly. You're, you're very clever, and I can appreciate a joke as well as the next one. But let's be sensible. I'm a prominent man. And I'm hoping to marry a fine, innocent girl. But that doesn't prevent you from pursuing other innocent girls, breaking their young hearts and blackening their reputations. Oh, for shame. You deserve no pity and you shall have none from me. Buy the world tomorrow and read the truth about yourself. You monster in man's clothing. Good evening, Mr. Potter. <laughs> John, the city's as dead as a mummy. People aren't doing anything they shouldn't. There's nothing left to expose. Uh, Miss Nelly. Oh, I'm tired of it all. This horrible office and the smell of ink. It's... Oh, Miss Nelly, I knew you'd come to feel that in time. A newspaper office is no place for a lovely woman like you. I say, let's forget about it for a night. My aunt has a box at the opera and Patia's. Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Dale. I really don't care for the opera. I'll have supper sent up to my room and read myself to sleep. I'd like to borrow one of your new books, if I may. Oh, yes, of course, but... Uh, Sir Hall Kane, Mrs. Humphrey Ward, Jules Verne, Around the World in 80 Days. Around the World... Around the World? Around the World! Oh, no. Oh, why not? Oh, no, Miss Nelly, you can't. Can't? Why, Mr. Dale, I'll wager I can make it in less than 80 days. But all alone, those, those savage countries. Miss Nelly, it's dangerous. Oh, nonsense, Mr. Dale. I've always maintained that a woman can go anywhere and do anything with perfect safety as long as she behaves in a ladylike manner. Nellie was a lady in so many ways. Can she travel round the world in less than 80 are listening to Agnes Moorhead as Nellie Bly in Nellie Was a Lady on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Nellie Bly, Nellie Bly. 
I bring the broom along. We'll sweep the kitchen clean, my dear, and have a little song. Nellie Bly, the famous girl reporter of the New York world, has become the most talked of woman in her profession. She has ripped the whole city to pieces and put it together again. And now she looks toward broader fields. The whole world, in fact. Nellie is in a dither as the day of her globe-spanning, time-defying journey is at hand. Now, Mr. Dale, John, Mr. Pulitzer has assigned you to cover my trip around the world. I shall cable you whenever and wherever it's possible. Uh, yes, Miss Nellie, now, but Mr. I... Mr. Dale, you must say that I wish to travel unencumbered by heavy luggage. I'm taking two light Miss satchels, Nellie, won't you two listen, satchels please? and two traveling costumes, a blue plaid and a tropical ensemble of camel's hair cloth, my plaid ulster, a light waterproof downpour... Miss Nellie, this may be our last a moment brush, together. A bank book and a pair of easy-fitting shoes. You may point out that I've had only four days to get ready. You'll undergo hardships, privations, grave dangers. Oh, cool, Mr. Dale, I shan't touch on any but civilized countries. I dare say there'll always be a cup of tea and a hot water bottle. Miss Nellie, at least, at least you must tell me one thing now. May I, dare I have any hope? Hope, Mr. Dale? Yes, hope that one day you will give me the inexpressible happiness of becoming my wife. Surely you must feel there's something beyond all this. Oh, Mr. Dale, John, I wouldn't be a true woman if I hadn't dreamed sometimes of a husband and a home. All the lonely hours I've spent in my little room after the day's work is done. Miss Bly, time, Miss Bly, 3.30. Oh, oh, I must hurry. My boat. Oh, Miss Bly, uh, Nellie, just one well, more I... word. You must promise during your trip to think of what I've said and give it your consideration. Yes, yes, Bly, I... Miss Bly, the mayor is here. The mayor? Uh, oh, I... And you'll give me your answer on your return. Yes, now goodbye, John. But, but promise me one thing, John. Yes, anything but If you anything. really love me, be sure that I get a good press. Oh. Goodbye, goodbye. Dear friends, Dear friends, goodbye. Today I begin my race with Father Time. In my hand, I hold a 24-hour watch so that at each moment I may know the time in New York City and count the hours until I return to you. So, goodbye. 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 November 14, 1889. As Nellie Bly leaves on her trip around the world, she begins what is to be the most highly publicized journey since Hannibal crossed the Alps and General Sheridan marched through Georgia. My cable to the New York world, London, England. I'd always heard that London was very foggy. It is. That the English people drink a great deal of tea. They do. That the complexions of the women are beautiful and the men are very well dressed. They are. Today, Miss Bly will pause in her headlong race with Father Time to pay a visit to Jules Verne, famed author of Around the World in 80 Days. Oh, it, it is foolish, mademoiselle. Why must you, a young woman, go around the world faster than my fictional character, Phineas Fogg, an old man who never lived? Because my paper wishes to show how fast one can go around the world, don't you see? No, 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 mademoiselle, I do not. Americans, they are foolish. Women are foolish. Why are you not at home raising a family around the world in 80 days? Ah, that is nonsense. Following my inspirational meeting with Monsieur Ben, I rejoin the ship and go on to Brindisi. Lovely, lovely Italy. It is engraved on my heart forever. I bitterly regret that I can only stay for two hours and 20 minutes, but I must hurry on. Nellie Bly on the fly. It is November 25th, and Nellie Bly is on the 11th day of her trip, one day behind schedule. From Maine to Mexico, from Louisiana to Liverpool, men, women, and children are charting her course on maps, hanging on her every move, sending up prayers for her safety. November 27th. I've reached Port Said on the Suez, the wickedest city in the world, where one's life is worth less than a straw in the wind. December 18th, 34 days out of New York. Nellie Bly has traveled to Singapore, and the whole world travels with her. Will she make it? Will she break the record, or will she not? Families are divided. Men argue in the streets. 
And in the southern states, it is said that several duels have been fought. Christmas Day, but for me no holly, no Christmas pudding. Far on the other side of the globe in fabled China, I eat my Christmas dinner alone in the Temple of the Dead. Nellie Bly, two days behind schedule. The New York world disclaims any financial responsibility for any bets, pools, wagers connected with Miss Bly's trip for the time of her arrival. I'm on the last hitch of my race with time. Soon, soon I'll come to the end. I have one morning and part of an afternoon for a tour of Japan, then across the broad Pacific. At San Francisco, a train is waiting to speed Miss Bly across the country. Cheering crowds gather at every station. Nellie responds with queenly courtesy. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you, thank you, but I must hurry on. Father Time, outdone by Nellie Bly. Hello. 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 Oh, Nellie. Hello. Nellie, Miss Bly. Oh, dear, my deadline. Oh, yes. On January That's 25th, Miss Bly steps off her train at Jersey City. Nellie. So many things. She has traveled 24,899 miles in 72 days, 6 hours, and 11 minutes. Please, Nellie, just a word. Nellie Bly has beaten Phineas Fogg's fable record by almost 8 days. Happy boy. Nellie. Nellie Bly. Oh, Mr. Dale. John. Miss Nellie, uh... May I, may I be so bold as to inquire, what are your plans now? Oh, rest, Mr. Dale. I'm so tired. Oh, if you'll call on me, perhaps a week from Tuesday night. I must speak to you now, Miss Bly. Yes, I know, I know. You want your answer. Mr. Dale, this is very difficult for me, but I must tell you... Uh, one moment. Miss Bly, in spite of my great regard for you, I am convinced that any more intimate association between us would be a mistake. What? I'm a simple man, and my only desire is for a simple life with a home and children. Miss Bly, I have followed your progress during these past weeks, and I cannot believe you could ever be content to share such a home as I can offer. If I'm wrong, pray forgive me. You're far from wrong, Mr. Dale. I, too, had arrived at precisely that conclusion, and I was about to tell you so. It would have been more the part of a gentleman, I think, to let the words come from me. Oh, I... I am most heartily sorry, Miss Bly. It's only no that No doubt I... you are right. I've had little time to think about myself. The whole world reads about my trip, but what befalls Nellie Bly herself is of no consequence. No importance at all. No one cares. Oh, Miss Bly, Nellie. Oh, I'm a brute, a beast. <laughs> I never dreamed you'd feel like this. Well, Nellie, ready for a little work? No. No, Mr. Cockrell, I, I must rest for at least a fortnight. Ah, but there's an assignment for you. Oh, no, no, I couldn't really. You know, Jeremiah Harker, you know, the blonde bluebeard, the confessed murderer of 17 women. 17 women? Oh, Miss Bly, you mustn't. He escaped on the way to Sing Sing and has barricaded himself in an old house on the river. He's shooting everyone on sight, but promises to give Nellie Bly an interview. He asked for me, personally? Miss Bly, Nellie, you can't do oh, such a thing. Oh, you be quiet, Mr. Dale. Mr. Cockrell, when must I go, if I go? At once, Miss Bly. The police are going to burn the house down if they can't get him out oh, the other way. Oh, then we must hurry. Oh, but what will I wear? I, I should appear older, much older, like a mother. He must have had a mother. Uh, come along, Mr. Cockrell, and help me find something to wear. Goodbye, John. <laughs> Hi, Nellie Mo, Nellie, listen, love to me. I'll sing for you, pray for you, a dozen melodies. Agnes Moorhead, heard tonight as Nellie Bly, will return in just a moment to our cavalcade microphone. Now, here is Gene Whitman. Many a soldier who owns a house 
wonders how it held up while he's been away, if the weather has damaged it, if it needs a coat of paint. Not long ago, a soldier in the Pacific area, Private Andrew J. Waldron, wrote home to a friend of his in the office of a real estate broker and manager in Boston. He asked his friend, Mr. Tillingast, to take a look at the Waldron house. So Mr. Tillingast, and by the way, this is a true story, took a look at Private Waldron's house and then sat down and wrote him a long, friendly letter about the weather and his own little daughter, Clara Jane, and her piano lessons, and the house. I don't blame you for asking how your house looks, he wrote, as you put a great deal of work into it, including the outside painting. Rest assured, it's just as attractive as ever, and the paint is standing up well. Most houses painted white do not begin to look as good as yours. I think you use DuPont paint, and if that's the case, they certainly have a paint that stands up. The reason we happen to hear about this is that Private Waldron was kind enough to take the time to write to the DuPont Company and tell us about it. I'm very glad now, he wrote, that I used a good grade of paint when I did that job four years ago. Private Waldron's house has stayed gleaming white through four New England winters, and thousands of other houses in all parts of America have stayed white through all the war years because DuPont outside white is self-cleaning. It is the whitest white that can be made. One whole department of the DuPont Company, the pigments department, is given over to the continual development and improvement of pigments, which give whiteness and color to paints. The pigment that gives the whiter white to DuPont paint is titanium dioxide, one of many scientifically compounded DuPont pigments. And the finishes division carries on research to develop the best and longest lasting vehicles for the pigments. We can now look forward to the time when even newer and further improvement paint, improved paints will be on the shelves of your local DuPont dealer. Paints that will be noteworthy examples of DuPont better things for better living through chemistry. And now, here is the star of tonight's DuPont cavalcade, Agnes Moorhead. This year, we will at last be able to say peace on earth when we send Christmas greetings to our servicemen and women overseas. The Christmas mail will be delivered safely and on time, but only if we cooperate here at home. The official time for mailing overseas Christmas packages is between now and October 15th, preferably by the end of this month. Remember, the time for mailing is from September 15th to October 15th. These days we are living in a new era in world history when science seems to take giant leaps into the future. Man is on his way toward conquering many of the terrors of yesterday, including epidemic disease. Next week, Cavalcade will tell the thrilling story of how science has fought the battle to stay alive. Our star will be Robert Young. Tune in next week for the battle to stay alive, starring Robert Young on the DuPont Cavalcade. Cavalcade programs of particular interest to servicemen and women are broadcast overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our Cavalcade play was written by Turner Bullock. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next week to Robert Young in The Battle to Stay Alive on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is the National Broadcasting Company.